We're leaving Verona today. We're catching a train uh, to the firstly to Bosman, or Boslo or something like that. And then we change trains, I think, onto a different gauge train to go up to, um, I can't remember the name. Brenner. Brenner, which is in the Brenner Pass. And then we're going to ride from there to Innsbruck, which is uh, you know, kind of downhill mostly. Uh, but also the train's not running between those two places, so we have no real choice. And then we're going to stay at Innsbruck overnight. So we're going up into the Alps and we don't know what to expect. We think we're missing out on a lot of climbing doing it this way. There is designated by seating to accompany the designated bicycle parking. And you can see we could roll them on. And when we have a look, they've got little seat belts for the bikes to hold them in place. Today we're going from Verona to Innsbruck. Unfortunately, there's track maintenance and that means we'll be taking the train from Verona to Brenner and then we'll have a hair-raising, terrifying downhill stretch across into Austria. So this should be interesting. A lot of people uh, take this train service up to Innsbruck and then take the downhill stretch down through Austria. Um, I'm looking forward to this. It's supposed to be a beautiful countryside and I'm very happy that we're not cycling up the, uh, <laughs> up the mountain. We have arrived and there are so many bicycles here. It is crazy. We've only got about an hour and a half in between trains. So we're going to grab some food and have a good quick look around. There's another beautiful town square. I love the cathedral's roof, all the colors of it. This is a very uh, fancy Swiss town with lots of bicycles, like bicycles everywhere. I love it. train on our way to Brennan where we're going to get off and ride. So far, you know, it doesn't seem that steep even though we've come up quite a ways. So, and the scenery is so beautiful on either side of the railway line. We're going through a lot more tunnels now so maybe riding would probably be more difficult than I imagine, but I would like to come back and ride this route without the Kraken. We've been riding down from Innsbruck. It's been very beautiful, you know. From Brenner. Yeah, from Brenner to Innsbruck. And it's been very beautiful, although that's sort of like debasing the word beautiful. It's been uh, impressive and, you know, the mountains looming over you and the green fields and the, the stream bubbling along next to you, turning into a river. And then you go past all these like cool, um, cool buildings a lot of them are like German and they've got the steeped roofs and they you know you expect to see a Braunhausen lady come out with a blonde hair you know it's very even though you're in Austria in Austria same same thing really <laughs> and uh, you know like you have these sort of cafes and this one's pretty cool we stopped hoping it was open but it's not but you know like uh, so you can go climbing because I take it climbing and hiking and biking are really big here because that's what we see we see lots of hikers and we see lots of bike riders. Just your little seat. 
We're in um, a beautiful bus shelter stuck halfway up a mountain. Today, when we got off at Bremer, there was like two ways to go. There was this one that was said it was a bit busy and it was called the 184. And I wanted to go on that, but PJ was, no, 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 we've got to take the side road. Um, and uh, I said, well, there's a, lot, here. there's a lot of hills on the side road. She's going, oh, no, you no. did not say that. You said it's downhill all the way, PJ. I said there was 280 metres of uphill on the one that's almost downhill, right? <laughs> and so she said, no, no, we'll go the other way. And the other way seems to have a lot of climbing in it, like a lot of climbing. And guess who's complaining about it? Me. The Kraken. We're seeing a lot of people in Lycra with uh, carbon fibre uh, bikes having a great time. Few people with uh, lots of bags. Yeah. I think they may have taken the other path. We can see the other path the whole way. It's, it's about <laughs> half a kilometre below us. It's down there. Okay, we're in Innsbruck, and this is the most expensive accommodation we've stayed in so far. And I think it's like 170 Australian dollars a night. And it's the size of a small closet. It says it's four star, which it probably is. The bathroom is surprisingly large. Oh my goodness. Okay. But the room is surprisingly small. But it is air conditioned and, you know, it's nice. The Australian dollar collapsing is not helping much. I'm not sure if you say that the sun has set once it's dipped down behind the mountains in the Alps. The mountains are a little bit high, I think it's a bit unreasonable. That's the path we just came yeah. down. And just turn to me. And this is our first wild camp because the campground that we turned up to refused to take tents, but it would take camper vans, vans, and cars. But for some reason it wouldn't take tents and then it was too far to get to the next one. So we've just wild camped. And it's a beautiful location we're wild camping. So it's not, not planned, but we've got no other choice. We can't make it to the next campground. So this is it. And it's beautiful. It's been a long time I've been waiting for you. I, I got my feelings up and it's just for you. I just need a little bit of time to breathe in and out. I just need a little bit of time to ease up my mind. All for you Situation got me running like I'm losing my mind All for you I feel with every little step I take I'm crossing your line All for you
What's it like, Charlie? Is it warm? It's a bit cold. Eh? Not very. We're at a fork of a river, or a stream in a river, and uh, we've only got a short distance to ride today, but a bit of up. And we're just riding along these perfect bike paths alongside the river. And uh, we've got mountains on either side of us and beautiful mountains behind us. And it's just idyllic and so peaceful. Although you can hear the cars, I must admit, you can hear the cars. But I think you, you're not going to get away from that anywhere in the valley. So it's, it's peaceful, idyllic. And uh, while the, the bike path's not uh, sealed, it's very good. Um, very few patches of loose gravel. So we're in Germany, in a little town, right next to a mountain, and uh, I was changing a flat tire of PJs, and uh, she was off, and so I was approachable because the scary Kraken wasn't there. And this guy came up and asked me if he needed a hand change in the tire, so I must look pathetic. <laughs> so I said, no, I'm fine. And then he started talking, so he was an ultra uh, athlete, so he does all these long distance bike rides, like the Trans Am in America, and he's done the North Cape and a few others. And it was really interesting. We talked for a while. He's been everywhere, done it. That's all he does. And uh, it was good. PJ came back, so he got, she got to hear most of the stories. And I could have talked to him for a long time, but he was a uh, very interesting fellow. And he's got uh, one video that he thinks is worth watching, which has got English subtitles, and it's the North Cape um, trip. So there'll be a link in the description. So when you click to follow us, you can go and see his uh, video.
situation got me running like I'm losing my mind. All for you, I feel with every little step I take, I'm crossing your line. All for 